This video was made possible by Dashlane. Speed up everything you do online for free for 30 days at dashlane.com slash H-A-I. Welcome to Half as Interesting. We're like a Hogwarts class about weird muggle facts taught by a less funny version of Fred and George Weasley. If your Bogart is outdated memes, you should probably leave now, but if your Patronus is keyboard cat, you're in the right place. But here's where the big reveal comes. This video isn't really about Harry Potter stuff. It's about accounting. First of all, goodbye everyone, but second of all, we're about to dive into how, despite having some of the highest box office grosses in Hollywood history, some of the Harry Potter films technically lost money. Let's start with some simple economics. Most people like having money, and most people don't like giving money to other people. It's a fact that some think is great, others think is bad, but no one can dispute is true. Kinda like how people feel about Dumbledore and Grindelwald making out. With that in mind, let's move on to another economic concept. Net profits. Simply put, net profits are what you get when you take the money something makes and subtract the money that it costs to produce. So, if Dashlane pays me $100 to make an HEI video, but it costs $40 to pay the security guard at my editor's sweatshop, $30 to bribe Susan Wojcicki to put the video on trending, and $20 to license the HEI initialism from Helicopter Association International, I've turned a net profit of $10. Just enough to buy a banana. So now, let's get into the accounting. A while back, movie stars decided that being beautiful and famous and rich wasn't enough for them. They wanted to be beautiful and famous and very rich. They figured that the way to get very rich was to negotiate into their contract not only a salary, but also a share of the movie's net profits. That way, if the movie made a lot of money, the actor would get some of it, and for a while, this worked. But then the studios realized that instead of giving the actors the money they wanted, they could just screw them out of it. All they had to do was hire someone to lie and cheat and steal. In other words, they had to hire accountants. Don't worry, no accountants are watching this video. It's tax season, aka corporate slavery season. Here's what those accountants did. They set things up so that each movie would technically be made by its own little company created specifically for that movie. So when Warner Brothers made Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, they had their accountants create a shell company called Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix Incorporated, but for short, let's call it Hippatutpi. Okay, actually no, let's just call it Phoenix Incorporated. Phoenix Incorporated is who technically makes the movie Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and if Phoenix Incorporated were to make a net profit, then anyone who is owed a portion of the film's net profit would get paid. So, if Daniel Radcliffe had negotiated to earn 1% of net profits, and Phoenix Incorporated made $100 million in net profits, Daniel Radcliffe would earn $1 million. Money he could use to avoid starring in movies where he plays a corpse or has guns bolted to his hands. But the thing is, no matter how much money the actual movie makes, Daniel Radcliffe will never get a cut of the profits because Phoenix Incorporated will never make a profit because it is designed specifically to lose money. Now, of course, the company doesn't actually lose the money. They know exactly where it went, to the very studio that created them. In this case, Warner Brothers. You see, to make sure it doesn't make a profit, Phoenix Incorporated will pay Warner Brothers exorbitant fees for distributing and advertising the film, no matter how much it actually costs to do those things. Here's the actual balance sheet from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. The movie grossed nearly $1 billion. At the time, it was the sixth highest grossing movie ever, but according to the balance sheet, it lost $167 million. So where did that $1 billion go? Well, some of it went to the movie theaters, some of it went to the cost of actually making the film, but the key to Hollywood accounting lies here, in the cost of advertising, distribution, and interest. Phoenix Incorporated paid the studio, Warner Brothers, $212 million to distribute the film, $130 million for advertising and publicity, and another $57 million in interest. But remember, Warner Brothers created Phoenix Incorporated, so they're paying all that money to themselves. By doing it this way, they ensure that Phoenix Incorporated overpays and thus makes no profit, and thus anyone who would have shared in Phoenix Incorporated's net profits gets nothing either. It's not just Harry Potter films that have had their profits disappear like Neville Longbottom's Baby Fat. In fact, according to Edward J. Epstein, author of The Hollywood Economist and yet another Epstein who didn't kill himself, nearly every movie ever released has, on paper, lost money. In an interview in 2011, David Prose, the man who played Darth Vader in Star Wars Return of the Jedi, said that he still gets letters claiming he can't be paid any residuals because the film hasn't turned a profit, despite the movie grossing $475 million on a $32 million budget. So remember, if someone offers you the net profits of a movie instead of paying you up front, tell them no. Meanwhile, 
If someone offers to speed up and simplify everything you do online for free, tell them yes. Let's practice now. What Dashlane is, is simple. It's a shortcut. Pretty much whenever you enter your info anywhere online, Dashlane cuts that out. No more entering your passwords, your address, your phone number, or anything. They're all autofilled. Meanwhile, Dashlane actually makes your accounts more secure since you can use big, long, complex passwords that you could never remember. Unlike other similar options, Dashlane syncs your data securely across devices, browsers, and apps so that, no matter what you use or where you are, your online experience will be optimized. You can try Dashlane Premium for free for 30 days by signing up at dashlane.com slash HAI, and then, by using the code HALFASINTERESTING, you'll get 10% off at the end of that.